start our meeting. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Clerk, please call a roll. Roll call. Uh, Trustee Marevka? Here. Trustee Jones? Here. Trustee Sluis? Here. Trustee Sturba? Trustee Ham? Here. And Trustee Bowden? Here. In your packets were a couple of minutes. One was from our May 24th public hearing for the appropriations ordinance and also for our regular village board meeting on May 24th. So uh, are there any additions or corrections to the uh, public hearing one first? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. A motion. A second. Second. To move by Trustee Barefka, second by Trustee Ham. Roll call vote. Trustee Marevka? Yes. Ha Ham? Yes. Jones? Yes. Bowden? Yes. Sturba? No. Motion. Mm -mm. Who did you miss? Me. Did I miss Julie. somebody? Yeah. Julie. Sluice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sorry. Okay, uh, next is the uh, any additions or corrections to our regular village board meeting of May 24th? Uh, I told uh, our clerk on the public works report, uh, it says Wilson Street and Alborn Street projects are up for review by IDOT, and that should be Wilson and North Street projects are up for review by IDOT. And then the next sentence, uh, it says IDOT in June, MFT resurfacing. So that it should read that the uh, West Street project um, the MFT resurfacing is going to start in June. Any other corrections or comments? Not a motion to approve. Motion. motion. Moved by yeah. Trustee Ham, second by Trustee Bowden. Jones. Oh, Jones, I'm sorry. Jones. Roll call vote. Ham? Yes. Bowden? Yes. Sturba? Yes. Then Bowden. Yes. Sluice? Yes. Marevka? Yes. Am I missing anybody? Ham. Sturba? No. Okay. Ham. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, next in your packet were the accounts payable and payroll. The payroll for the pay period ending 529-21 of 46,468.91. Uh, also bills in the general fund of 49,404.35. In the MFT fund of $4,795.54. And from the BDD, $450 for a total of $54,649.89. Are there any questions or comments on the bills? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion. Second. Moved by Trustee Ham, seconded by Trustee Sluice. Roll call vote. Ham? Yes. Sluice? Yes. Marevka? Yes. Bowden? Yes. Jones? Yes. Sturba? Right. Next, public comments and or questions. Yeah. Can I get my, my first? Can I come yeah, up? go right ahead. Right. Stand up, state your name. And my name is Emma Azo. I own the Styled Canine of Town. And I'm here to discuss the, what's a, the official, the beautification, downtown restoration sure. gig. Um, <laughs> so I am pro one way and you'll have to forgive me because I'm not so great with my cardinal cross points but what I believe would be best is one way second street going north railroad street going south and main street going west 
So I believe what that would be is that people turning off of Route 50 would be coming, would turn right if that would be west. I'm hoping that's correct. That way it would make a big square and I think that would be easiest for people to um, get used to. That would make a big circle and then everybody can hopefully transition into that smoothly. I also think that on 2nd Street, making it north is easy for people to turn into parking spots. Right, since people majority come into 2nd Street off of Main and tend to turn right first. And then they utilize the second parking spots the other way. Because people tend to park on the right side because they go to Cayman, they go to Susie's, they go to Style Canine, and then they take up the other side of the street. So that's my opinion, and I think that would be best. Thank that's you. really all I've got, I think. Thank you. Thank no you. problem. Thanks. Emma, did you sign in? I did, yeah. Okay, thanks. Anybody else who wants to talk, um, please sign in. My name is Scott Johnson. I'm a business partner with Mari Smith, who will be hopefully soon uh, owner of Susie's Saloon. Um, Mari made a decision to come out here because uh, she thought the downtown area of Piedmont had a chance to be resuscitated and revitalized quite a bit, and she wanted to put the investment into it, including looking at the facade of the building and other things like that. We haven't closed on the business yet, but she definitely wants to get this thing done and over with. But she wants to see the downtown. She doesn't care which way the streets go. The sidewalks and streets have got to be upgraded. The street light for downtown, it's got to be done. It just has to be done. It's got to be resuscitated a little bit, revitalized, flowers, plants, I mean, just make it look, you know, it's, it's, will it ever be like a Frankfurt? I don't think you want it to be like Frankfurt. Will it ever be Mantino? That's a completely different animal. Your own downtown. You've got a great little history here, and let's just show it off and make it just bring this little area back. And um, it won't affect taxes at all. It's, well, I understand, I'm a CPA, it's not going to affect your tax rate. So let's just put a little bit of money into the downtown area and see what happens. That's my story. Thank you. 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 All right, anybody else? <laughs> Ed Nelson, the lower on the hay. Um, I would be against the one-way streets in Piaton. We're a small farm town. Um, we're growing. Um, everybody that I have talked to over in my neighborhood um, and a bunch of the seniors um, that I meet with almost daily at McDonald's, um, they're going to be confused with the one ways. They're also against having the, the parallel parking. They, a lot of them can't parallel park. So that means they're going to have to park over on Railroad Street if that's, there's parking going to be over there. Um, some of them can't walk very well. We have a lot of seniors in town that can't walk very well. So it's going to be less people that want to come into our downtown area and go to Mantino or other towns, Beecher, and spend their money there. We need them here. The other next thing, um, we have a garage sale coming up, and it's great. Um, everybody gets to get rid of a lot of stuff. Um, about five or six years ago, I think it was the week prior to this week, and for some reason it was changed. Um, we've got a lot of things going on this weekend, and we the board would, and the business owners would look at spreading it out. This town needs things to do, not all in one weekend. Um, the cheerleaders have their car wash, there's a the garage sale, um, shoot, there's a couple other things. Uh, the dance studios had their dance this weekend. Um, so, if the business owners could look at that, and uh, spread things out. Finally, um, more events for adults, not against kids or children, but for the adults in town are, are needed at um, downtown, uh, maybe some type of street music, block off the street, even by the, the Legion area could be blocked off without any 
biking off Second Street or Main Street. Um, just something for us to do. That should do it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Steve Cross, um, I own the furniture store and the funeral home downtown Eatone. I've expressed my opinion to the ad hoc committee and the, the village board previously, but I just thought I would take the opportunity to re reiterate, I'm not against fixing the streets, fixing the sidewalks, changing the street lights, beautifying the downtown. I am against the one-way concept. I think it's going to cause chaos. Uh, my other concern is as you widen the sidewalks, this is something I thought about over the weekend, you know, we have an issue downtown of some businesses not cleaning off their sidewalks. It's gotten better since some more, some more of the buildings have gotten occupied. I used to shovel Main Street from Railroad all the way to First Street, just so my side of the street was clean. But now I've got some help, you know, with new businesses there. But as you widen the sidewalks and narrow the streets, you're going to create a lot bigger job for public works. You're going to give the business owners more sidewalk to shovel and less room to put the snow. Right now, the only place we can put the snow in the winter is into the street. We have no other place to put it. Um, and I was just wondering if you had talked with the police department about this, gotten their opinion, or if you've talked to the fire district as you go to this one-way concept. Uh, because again, as you narrow the streets, you're going to create some issues there that might be good to look at now before you create the, you know, the design that you're looking to do. Thank you. Angie, you want to? Sure. Okay. Yep, so um, I just have a couple, do you want me to come up here? Sure. Okay. Uh, a couple updates. So um, as far as from engineering, the final punch lifts from Corning, we're still just working through that. Um, final restorations and, and things like of that nature. Um, we also are starting flushing tomorrow. Um, so that will be a process that takes um, to complete. It'll take about a month and a half, about six weeks. We'll divide into three areas. So first will be um, north of Corning for about two weeks, and then south of Corning, and then east of Route 50. Um, there should have been a swift reach that went out today. If it didn't go out yet, it's going to go out tonight, letting um, everybody north of Corning know that flushing will begin. People might experience a little change in pressure, nothing alarming. Just wanted to let everybody know that we'll be doing that. So if you see us out flushing over the next six weeks, that's it. Nothing new from no, IEPA? I have nothing yet. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions before? Thank you. Yep, thank you. Have a good evening. Any other public comment? All right, if not, we'll move on to committee reports, uh, administrative report. <coughs> Building uh, permits have um, gone down significantly at, for re-roofs. Uh, in 2019 and 2020, there were the majority of our permits issued. However, um, the, and that was due to a storm, storm events. Um, 2021, um, they significantly decreased. Uh, overall number of permits, though, are relatively the same. Um, the, uh, the village is going to have a booth at the block party um, and we're going to focus on code compliance. So we're going to just be providing information uh, to people about common code issues and just try to um, get word out on, um, on those types of things. We'll have a brochure, we'll have giveaways and a suggestion box. So hopefully we'll see you all there. Um, the Illinois Municipal League, uh, they will conduct their uh, uh, conference this year in September in person, so if any board members are interested in attending that, let me know. That's all I have. Thank you. Any questions for the administrator? All right, we'll move to the downtown ad hoc community report. Okay, uh, we met on uh, June 11th. Um, we discussed um, uh, a project uh, scope and uh, cost estimate we received from Upland Design for specifically the Railroad Street parking area. It was broken down to a north area, uh, basically from the Legion to the north, 
uh, and then the southern area um, um, behind the behind the bars there, and uh, the uh, the two combined totals on that uh, uh, project estimate are 1.1 million. Uh, we talked about different ideas of saving some money with uh, um, different uh, plants and trees and that type of stuff, but. Uh, the rough estimate was uh, in your packet there at 1.1. Uh, we further discussed uh, giving some direction to Upland Design for their overall downtown um, uh, revitalization design. Uh, we felt it was uh, important to commit to a design just to get uh, a cost estimate similar to what we got uh, with the railroad. Uh, so to do that, um, the committee agreed uh, just for budgetary concerns, not a final um, final commitment to any traffic direction or parking design, but we did uh, agree that uh, a one-way direction on 2nd Street and uh, a one-way direction on Main with angle parking both ways would uh, be the direction we need to uh, give to Upland to, to achieve a budgetary um, cost scope uh, of, of this goal project we're looking to complete. So um, I think that uh, covered most of the uh, downtown. Okay. Questions from the board on the committee report? <coughs> the reason why we're doing one way on both streets and not just leaving it how it is? Well, I think the consensus of the committee was um, uh, improving um, the public space, not, not only just the, the street space, I mean, improving what we have. Um, and it seemed like the, the best uh, compromise to achieve no loss in parking and improved public space was one way. Um, yeah, I, know I just talked to a couple people, and the big people brought it to me, and they said they were going to see it not change at all. One way or parallel yeah. parking, I think that we had a lot of support from the business <coughs> uh, at the start of the meeting. Yeah, that's said otherwise. But, uh, um, we're not going to, we, we, we've all agreed as the, at the committee level, we're not going to uh, get full 100% consensus from the, the business owners, the property owners, or the public. And we just have to make the right decision. Hope the changes are uh, good for the long run. And, and to clarify, all we're doing is developing a budget. We're not doing anything other than creating a budget. So if you tear up the streets, you tear up the sidewalk, it's roughly the same cost if it's yeah. one player two ways. Well, yeah, I just want to, because I got friends that work at Frankfurt and they talked about that their uh, village that you talking about tearing up Kansas Street because they got parallel parking and go to diagonal parking. So, so Monday or Friday night when we had the meeting, we went through all of that and we realized that there's a lot of possibilities and a lot of towns are going different directions, but all we're doing is we're just creating the budget. <clears throat> okay, uh, moving on to police committee report. I guess that's you again, Ken. Yeah, let me get my cheat sheet for that one. Um, <laughs> let's see, we met uh, May 25th. Um, we discussed the speed sign on Ratchet Road. Um, that road sees um, uh, 500 to 700 vehicles per day. Uh, as far as um, cars speeding above 35 miles an hour. Um, it accounted for about 1.39% of those vehicles daily, which is a small, small percentage for that uh, traffic volume. Uh, we discussed um, <coughs> personnel hiring, um, discussed um, uh, truck enforcement potential, and also uh, a squad car purchase. And I think that's about it. Yeah, I think we talked a little bit about the um, animal control a little bit too. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what, what did you guys come up with, like the truck enforcement? Was there any. Did you do I, anything with that? Or we didn't do anything with, with that. I mean, no. I we, we, asked, we asked the chief to kind of start thinking about that a little bit. Okay. Um, you know, I, I think. Bill said that it's very difficult to do, but uh, we asked him to kind of start looking into that a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is this truck he, control where they drive through town? 
or weight. Well, it was like weight and length that was yeah. the length of trucks as well. Yeah, I mean, something's got to be done over in the old part of town. Um, these guys driving these trucks are idiots. <laughs> they don't care. And I had a guy drive up six feet into my yard last week. And then when he made the turn, I thought he was going to knock down two of the trees we had just planted. He was that far up in the thing. Before I could get to him, I mean, he took off. You know. But they started on the street, and they said, well, my GPS says. Right. Right. And the next thing I get, if I get a hold of one of those, I'm going to throw it. I mean, I'm, I'm so irritated. I mean, it's ridiculous. They don't care how much property damage they do. All they care about is where their final destination is. Yeah. They've knocked down the telephone pole by my house probably half a dozen times in the last two years. And it's obvious it's not a truck route. You know, but they don't care. They don't think. They just, but we got to do something. We got to have some kind of imposing fine that just makes their life miserable. Yeah, and I think part of it too, is the, another besides, you know, enforcing that it's not a truck route is um, somehow getting the businesses to adjust their addresses so that they're, like I talked to Black Diamond, you know, their address is First Street. Well, it should be off of Route 50 if they could, you know, just well, change it. would be like a Harlem address. Right, if they just grandma. change it, or if they can get Google signs maps. of some sort. Yeah, I see signs I don't know aren't as good because they, they door the punch same. it in their GPS and they just follow that. So yeah. Black Diamond is the biggest violator I mean, yeah. people that go there. I think oh. if we can get that changed um, in addition, like said, to some enforcement, that'll make a big difference. <laughs> it, but it's terrible. You know, the, we had problems with it. It was a grate down on the corner of Sumner and 2nd Street that we had a special order. It's because they cut across I mean, they're not like running on the edge of the road. They're four feet up on the street, and they rolled, ran over that thing, and it was cast iron, and it busted. It took us two months to get a new one. Yeah. They don't care. Um, the chief it, also said too, like what's hard right now is that um, they used to use the scales out in '57 to weigh the trucks, and those aren't open all the time. So we really have no way to weigh the trucks at this time. To but, but most of, most of those yeah. trucks that we're avoiding, though, they just are getting from the north to the south. Right. They're not meandering through the neighborhood. But these guys will meander through, and I mean, it's you wouldn't believe it. I know Beecher has like Emerson. He's in charge of a truck route. They have scales on it. They have a pickup truck they bought, and he has scales for it where they can do portable scales. And I think they have a no truck route in Indiana. I think it's nothing over 53 feet, and there's no trucks allowed inside town and anything. They have ordinance like that. Yeah, I mean, that was what I, the 53 feet was what I was, was I heard from other towns, and they, you know, kind of, that's an easy one to enforce, because all you need is the tape measure. Yeah. And so... Is that uh, from the front of the semi to the back of the trailer? No, it's just the trailer. It's just the trailer. Yeah, just the trailer. Yeah, that's, that's the max you can go legally. In the right. If, if you're beyond that, there have some problems. Yeah. It's, Illinois Municipal League um, also brought this up as an initiative. One of the communities having similar problems. Many communities have similar problems. So another front where we can kind of address this issue is through that initiative where we can have direct contact with either, like Amazon is also a problem where they just punch it into the GPS and, and they just go wherever and sometimes it's not an appropriate route. So, you know, we want to work with the, the big companies, the mapping companies, the Amazons, and address it from their end too. And it's it's very bureaucratic. So we're trying to work on an initiative through the Illinois Municipal League to um, get that addressed. So public safety can have a direct access to somebody at Amazon where they can update something in their system and it won't happen again. The majority of the problems not with the Amazon truck is with these guys hauling steel. Yeah. And, um, <coughs> It, it's absolutely unbelievable. Okay, so we'll keep working on that. Um, police committees can need to have another uh, committee meeting here pretty soon so they can uh, follow up on that. Uh, engineer report, uh, Troy is off this week because uh, White uh, was supposed to be induced today with their second child, third. so third child, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, did you wanna just read his report? Or? Yeah, he just has um, <clears throat> two updates. Uh, one's on West Street resurfacing our IDOT project there. We had a pre-construction meeting, and I do believe Bob mentioned that he attended that um, the last time he was here. Um, so that's moving forward. Oh, lost my cheat sheet. 
um, probably going to, um, there was discussion about waiting till after 4th of July, but we're gonna move forward with that construction. Um, then there's the MFT resurfacing project that we're doing um, in-house here uh, for um, North and Wilson, and that'll, uh, that bid opening will begin um, June 21st, and we'll award that project, and then the construction will start in mid-July. Uh, <clears throat> I've got some comments. Uh, so we had a successful blood drive uh, back the last week of May. Um, I want to thank the Legion for partnering with the Village uh, and the American Red Cross to get that done. Um, it, was, it was very successful. They got 20% uh, more than they uh, anticipated. Uh, we're going to try to do this on a, uh, uh, I think every two months or um, so that uh, the next date is August 9th and then after that's October 27th. Um, I want to thank everybody who took part in Memorial Day celebration. It was a you know, nice day. It's always a great ceremony. They had a great band this year. And um, just encourage uh, everybody uh, next year to, to get out there. It's a, it's a very nice uh, small town ceremony. Um, I want to compliment the Public Works Department, all the residents. The village is really looking nice. Um, you know, our code department's getting after people who've got uh, tall grass, and uh, I, I just think everything's looking great. The trees that we plant in the parkways are really coming along, and um, it's just nice, you know, we, we kind of get blinders on how nice our town looks because we're just used to it, but, you know, you go other places, and, you, you know, you, you just uh, are thankful that uh, our residents and our uh, public works departments uh, take us such good care of the town. Uh, June 24th, which is coming up uh, next week, uh, we're having a taxing body meeting uh, with the fire department, uh, library district, school district, uh, the townships. Um, we invited Will County as well. Um, I'd, I'd like to make this kind of a quarterly event where we just get together and just to tell each other what we're doing. Um, just, I mean, we're all using the same pot of money from the taxpayer so if we can if there's any way that we can collaborate uh, you know it, it's uh, good for everybody um, like somebody said we got a lot of things going on this week uh, we got the block party and garage sales uh, chambers done a great job at uh, putting together a fun event looks like the weather's gonna be nice um, imagine you still could use some volunteers or no you're pretty good on the yeah. tent or some volunteers Saturday night yeah so if you're interested at all I'll contact uh, uh, the chamber or Julie um, we've got a new event happening tomorrow at the um, icebox creamery creamery it's a, a cone with a cop event from six to eight we're gonna have two of our police officers out uh, front. Uh, they've got coupons for a small ice cream cone, and you know it's just an opportunity for residents to come out and uh, you know meet a police officer if they have a question, you know, about anything in town about the police. Uh, that's what they're you know they're they're happy to talk to anybody. So take advantage of that and you know get some free ice cream. Uh, update on Second Street Saloon. We did have uh, uh, published a, a request for proposals for the demolition of that. Um, we did have a asbestos survey done. There is a little bit of asbestos there, so we've got to get uh, a request for proposals for asbestos removal before we do the demolition. So that's moving along. Did they say where the asbestos was? Yeah, there's a long report. It, um, in the floor, in the typical places, some, yeah, you know, tile, that old and, tile, like yeah. insulation, floor tile, yeah. ceiling tiles. Yeah, they, I mean, they, it was quite an extensive report. <laughs> I mean, most of it doesn't have asbestos, luckily, but mm -hmm. I mean, there's a few products that do, so. Um, we've talked a little bit over the last year about doing adjudication for uh, non-moving violations, you know, parking tickets, uh, code violations, that type of thing. 
uh, the administrator and I met with the mayor and the administrator of Beecher a couple weeks ago, and um, they are they want to move forward with the process and you know combining with uh, with us to uh, get this done. So uh, the next step forward is we want to get all of us together with our police chiefs and um, kind of figure out if this makes sense for us. So that's kind of still on the table. I met with Representative Haas and our county board rep, Judy Ogala, about the I-57 interchange. Um, they're concerned that um, the state is spending money on uh, a new interchange at Eagle Lake Road instead of fixing up the interchange here in Piatone and also the Moni interchange needs help. So, um, you know, we were kind of brainstorming on, you know, who we can talk to and, you know, we've already been in IDOTs here about it uh, through Senator Joyce. Um, so we're just trying to get more on IDOT's radar that, you know, we want to be on their plan to uh, upgrade that interchange. Uh, speaking of I-57 interchange, there's been a little bit of movement, um, you know, with the easement issue on 88th Avenue. We had our, you know, fingers crossed that something will happen there. I mean, we've got kind of our approval from IDOT and WILDOT for improving that intersection. And, you know, if we get this easement done, that means we can move forward. You know, Sioux Hospital, the developer, he's ready to, you know, get a shovel out there. Uh, ASAP so um, you know keep your fingers crossed on that uh, Wilmington Road sidewalk uh, you know we did have some engineering done on that uh, Troy had sent me um, so they they kind of figured out where all the right-of-ways are and where the property lines are and um, for the most part it was good news we, we should be able to uh, fit a sidewalk in there there's a couple spots, uh, properties that we may have to get a little bit of an easement from. Um, bad news is we got news yes or today that we didn't get the ITEP grant that we'd asked for. So um, we'll, uh, if we want to get this done, you know, we'll have to do it our, ourselves. And uh, as soon as Troy gets back from his maternity uh, leave, I'll. Um, Get after him to kind of, you know, give us some estimates on what it would cost. I, instead of, you know, his proposal, if we were going to do it through a grant, we were going to go all the way from Ratchy Road all the way to McDonald's and kind of wrap it around, um, you know, Oriole Drive. But uh, I think if we can at least do from, um, is that Metal Lane? Metal Lane. Metal Lane to Gull, um, whatever it's called, Gull Drive. Um, at least that'll get people from one subdivision to the other. Um, so we'll see, uh, we'll get Troy working on that. Um, I did get a, a, a call from a, a resident who's got some concerns about golf carts and ATVs using the park. And um, uh, and I, so I told him I, I think it would be best if they came to a police committee meeting to kind of express his concerns with that. What Done. Personally, I, I'd like you guys also to talk about enforcement more of our golf court, golf cart ordinance. Um, you know, people are supposed to be wearing seat belts and little kids aren't supposed to be sitting on those things and it's really not a whole lot of enforcement on that. So, uh, something else for you guys to discuss. Uh, and finally, I, I, you know, I'd like to thank the downtown committee. I'd like to thank the business owners who got together uh, to express their concerns, the more input we get, I think is great. And um, uh, yeah, so I look forward to moving forward with that. All right, uh, we don't have any old business. Add a new business, a special event in Class C1 one day liquor license for DV events, uh, Inc. Game on. Uh, so, in your package, you got the application, uh, and Vicki is here to tell you what she wants to do. 
if you can't tell by my kindergarten drawing, which is super cool. Amy, did you put it in there? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. You saved my life. I can put it up on the screen. Um, I'm not sure what I'm allowed. I mean, I was basically given a blank canvas, and I kind of followed what we did uh, two or three years ago when we had it. Um, I just have a couple questions. I'm willing to work with you guys. You just need to tell me what to do. Um, as far as what kind of fence we're going to put around it, um, we're making stanchions out of two by fours, which cost a million dollars right now. Um, so we're making stanchions, painting the base black, the post red, and then having the white chain. So it's a clear understanding you stay inside. You know, I mean, it's not going to stop people from going over. We'll obviously monitor that. But it will be, you know, and I'm going to have signs posted, can't take alcohol out, all that stuff. Um, I just need to know, do I need to have those stanchion or that gated on all four sides with one entrance? Those are the things I'm not clear about. So I'm willing to work with you guys. You just need to tell me what to do because I don't, they just said draw something off it. Well, I mean, you don't want to give me it's free rain. <laughs> Typically, a one entrance point is. But I can't flex. Chief was pretty clear I can't flex the sidewalk. So, do you want the sidewalk? You do want the sidewalk then gated in. So, you want a fence on all four sides with one entrance in, correct? I'm not. I'm not. Uh, no. Well, we'll let the board discuss yeah. it. Okay. What do you want? I mean, obviously, if I don't have to build stanchions for a fourth side, that would be awesome. But if that's what I have to do, then that's what I have to well, do. Well, that worked out real well before when you had the only entrance, you had to go through the bar. And you had a three-sided... Um, you didn't have to go through the bar because they wouldn't let me block off the sidewalk. Three years ago? Yeah. I thought you had to go through the bar to get into the garden area. No, because they didn't want me to there. block the sidewalk. So, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's kind of... So, um, I guess it's the board's opinion. I mean, it, I would like to just see one entrance and you know one exit. Um, I don't think it's a big deal blocking off the sidewalk since the street is going to be closed. So it's not like people are going to be competing with vehicles. And that would be helpful because then I can use the building as one of the sides, and we don't have to have the fence. And you'd enter through the bar. Yes, so we can come to the left of the. Nobody could enter from the street. Just going into it. Right. You'd have to come around to do it. Yeah, that would be fine. And you I can do monitor that, that mm -hmm. a lot easier, too. Mm -hmm. And we did decide um, we're not going to put the cheap white tables with the cheap white chairs. We're going to move our nice black furniture out there with the umbrellas. And we are trying to make it a little nicer because of everything that's going on with the beautification proposal downtown. We are 100% for it, obviously. And I just think that if people see how nice a simple little outdoor patio can look with the nice umbrellas, you know, we're going to make it look nice. And I just think that it can only help the case as far as the beautification, you know, down Second Street because we're all for it. Okay. Um, any other questions? For her? So, are you guys? Um, I guess I'll entertain a motion to approve this with uh, you know one entrance uh, only and um, yeah. Motion. Second. And moved by Trustee Jones, seconded by <coughs> Trustee Moret. Jones? Yep. Roll call roll. Jones? Marevka? Yes. Sturba? Yep. Sluice? Abstain. Ham? Yes. Bowden? Yes. And I'm going to pre apologize you. that I have to leave right away because okay. I got to call Bingo in 20 minutes. I just don't want to be rude. But I got to go too. Are you going to Bingo? Yes. Uh, <laughs> item B approval recommendations downtown ad hoc committee to guide Brooklyn on the master plan. So, as you heard from Trustee Ham's report, uh, their recommendation was to uh, tell Upland to move forward with. Uh, coming up with the final, not final numbers, but estimated numbers for um, the revitalization like we've been talking about, uh, to preserve the parking, which, you know, the business owners made loud and clear that they don't want any less parking. Uh, we 
uh, they just uh, recommended uh, going with a one-way street and keeping the angled parking. So, um, does anybody want to make a motion to that effect? I'd just like to interject a couple of things. Um, when we had that ad hoc meeting with the business, they were all, I think they were all property owners on Main Street. And, and the number one thing uh, was no parallel parking. Number two, maintain as much parking as is possible because in, in addition to the parking situation now, we've got like 20 storefronts that are not occupied by businesses. And hopefully as things go on, those will be occupied, which will stress the amount of parking even, even more. Everybody was for uh, enhancing the downtown, getting that crown out of the street, uh, make nice sidewalks, uh, nice street uh, lights, um, one-way parking, or one-way driving, I mean, um, not so much, um, but to maintain the park, because in small town people want access to the businesses very easily, and uh, routing people out behind <coughs> Railroad Street, it's nice for overflow, but it, people, unless you're going into one of the bars, it's not going to go through there and walk around. And they're pretty adamant about all those things. And they were, these are all people that have a big stake, all property owners. Uh, and like I said, nobody's against you know, not nobody's against spending money and making it nice. They just uh, have certain criteria they feel are extremely important. Um, so I just want to make that known. And, and we're really not locking in on anything at this point. We're just getting pricing on parts of the project. Is that correct? And I have two more questions, too, about your report, Pete. How come we didn't have a parade, a uh, Memorial Day parade? Several people have asked me about that. Who's in charge of that? It's the Legion. The Legion is, OK. Because they, they seem to like that. And then and the, the other thing was, um, we should announce that um, you know, we've got bags over all the one- or two-year-old trees for watering, which is great. But we don't want to forget the you know, homeowners about trees that are three and four years old yeah. and that they need to put some water on those to keep yeah, we'll bring that up in the correspondence. So, um, getting back to the agenda item, uh, Kent, do you want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make, 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 make a motion. I'll second it. Okay. Um, so, the motion is to approve the recommendation of the Downtown Ed Hoc Committee to direct Upland to finish with their plan with keeping all the angled parking at uh, the one way street. Any further discussion? Not roll call vote. Roll call vote. Pam? Yes. Bowden? Yes. Sluice? Yes. Repka? Yes. Jones? Yep. No, I don't think. Sturba. Go ahead. Yes. yes. Mike, I don't think you can vote on this. Oh, oh. sorry. Oh. No vote. <laughs> <laughs> no vote. Abstain. What? Yeah. Abstain. Abstain. Because he owns property. Oh, it's in the tip. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't catch it. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Moving on. Uh, amendments and implement, implement, implementation of Ordinance 12 03, the ordinance adding a new chapter, make it, uh, 155 Vacant Village, the Village of Piatone Code, Title 15. So, um, if you recall, a month or two ago, we passed a vacant building ordinance. Um, the next day, I got a call from a, a real estate, um, what are they? The, it's like their professional organization from Illinois the state. Illinois Realtors Association. Illinois Realtor Association. So they, you know, they wanted to look at the ordinance. They were concerned about, you know, any kind of regulation on their business. Um, their main concerns were, um, we had some wording in there that we have to have an agent has to be uh, in Will County. And they had taken the term agent to mean a real estate agent, which we told them, you know, that's not the case. It's just somebody who's representing the property owner. Um, but, you know, if it makes them happy, you know, we, we can change the word agent. Uh, the other thing that they didn't like was that we had a uh, 
requirements in there that people have to post, uh, you know, some kind of sign on their building that uh, this is who owns the building and their phone number. Because they said, well, if you do that, people know it's vacant and they're going to, you know, squat in it and, you know, uh, cause damage. And then what was the third? Some about probate. So they're concerned. If they somebody, could not articulate their concern, so <laughs> I really I think they're saying like if somebody dies and that house is vacant and it's in probate, they're concerned that they would have to register the building as they go through probate. Right? Is that what it was? So anyway, it wasn't very clear. I told them that you know we'd bring it before the board and. Uh, Did you guys have any suggestions or what's the penalty if we don't do what they want? I mean, is it, they're not here to represent themselves, right? No, they're not. Okay. No. Um, I did tell them about the meeting that we were discussing it, and I gave you his email uh, with his comments. Yeah. So, so they're the guy who contacted us is like they're. <coughs> He's not even a real estate agent, he's their like director of this group. Um, I mean you know, who knows? I mean, what do you think? That's it. I That's your have opinion. no real comment. I doubt the ordinance is appropriate as in. Yeah. yeah. And if it's that big a deal to them, they would have been here. Okay. Well, we'll let them know we talked about it and we didn't think those changes necessary. Sorry, but I do kind of agree though with putting the name and number on the building only because I think the right people would squat in there or damage it on purpose knowing that nobody's there. Um, is there a way that they know it's vacant or whatnot. I mean, at least we could have a list of it. So if anybody had questions about it, at least maybe they could call you or the village um, secretaries or whatnot to ask questions about it or who to contact instead of having it there for the whole publicity. We change something like that possibly. And, yeah, I mean, anything can be changed. So it's up, you know, it's up to the board. And it's already public information, so you're not hiding anything, right? I mean, you can pick up your phone, type in the address, and phone county GIS tell you who owns it, right? Right. I mean, it's already written into the ordinance. Correct? Yeah, like we would have all that information. Maybe anyone wouldn't have their phone number. Right. I mean, that's you know, that's not a, a huge deal to me. I mean, I, I don't really. Care one or the other if we have it on there. Um, the big thing to me is that, that we have the information if there is a code violation or you know who we call. So, I mean, if, you know, throw these guys a bone if you just want to take that requirement out of there. I don't. It doesn't doesn't matter to me. So, I'm indifferent. Yeah. Well, but don't they have, are we going to require them to register with the village? Yes. Okay. Yeah, just their yeah, name we'll and phone number won't okay. be posted on the door. Oh, yeah, that's the whole idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I guess it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cat and mouse game. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what we're mm -hmm. trying to prevent is, yeah, yeah, you have a vacant building, you're in, you should be incentivized to right. not fall, let it fall into disrepair. Yeah. So there's right. lots of vacant buildings, but if they're, the grass is mowed, the doors are closed, yeah, and it's locked up, we're not going to be bothering the owner of that building. Right. It's the buildings that are vacant that are falling apart that this ordinance is designed for. Yeah. So I, I'm less sympathetic to the owner of a building that's letting his building fall into disrepair mm -hmm. than I am to somebody who's taking care of their building. Right. So <laughs> the point's mute on me as far as what they want. I mean. Well, that's the only thing I would want to change is just because even the people that are keeping up on their yards and everything, if you have a big sign on their front door that says this property is vacant, here's the phone number of the owner. I don't think that's really fair to them 
if, <clears throat> like you said, they're keeping up with it and everything. I just don't think it's fair to like just advertise that part of it. Okay. That's all. Right. all. Mm -hmm. All right. Well. Um, yeah. Well, so I'll make the motion with those changes. Okay. I'll second that. Motion with those changes. <laughs> this well, ordinance has already been approved. Yes. Yeah, so we'll have we to, need a new ordinance. Right. So okay. this was just discussion. Today. Yeah. Okay. It has oh, to okay. be. So you can tell us that we'll work on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it would have to be a new written ordinance right. amended. Okay. 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 So just you just want to address the the sign on the outside of the building correctly. Okay. And then we did talk to them about, you know, maybe clarifying the definition of agent. But, I mean, as long as we're going to do something, we can put it put in something in there. Yeah. Okay, moving on, ordinances. Uh, ordinance approving a real estate sale contract authorizing the purchase by the village of real property located adjacent to the Illinois Central Railroad right of way, Kippen, Illinois, and approving the expenditure of. Um, now that says downtown TIF, but I'm going to change it to say business development district funds for such purpose. Uh, this would be ordinance 2110 and um, we you know, talked about this last time and there's information in your packet about it. So basically purchasing this uh, parking area uh, adjacent to the village hall between Corning and Main and then purchasing part of the parking area from uh, on the west side of the tracks from Maine to Crawford. Um, I, I want to change at the Business Development District Fund because um, we, I don't know if we have enough money to cover uh, in the TIF district funds that we have right now. So the railroad will keep from the tracks west and we will buy from that point on mm -hmm. and then we have a long-term lease agreement from well, it's 10 years that was the longest they've gone really but the cool part is, is you know where the old fire state fire building is they're selling us that part that comes with the purchase yeah, yeah. so they can't do anything along the whole part of the tracks because we're now in the way oh. So <laughs> that's good. <laughs> and plus, you know, Drolley's, oh, they own all the way up to the right away, and you own all up the right away. Um, so it's not like they can run another line through there or anything. Well, you know, one time there were three lines coming yeah. through town. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't have to sit back 50 feet from the rail. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how close it right. is. Right. Yeah. It's a lot closer than 50 feet. Right. So um, the purchase price. For this was twenty five thousand, just so for the record. Is there a motion to approve this? Motion. With the uh, change to the ordinance to delete the reference to the TIF yes. and insert um, the business district. Yeah. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Mike Kent. Mike Kent. This is Mrs. Motion. Okay. Second. Moved by Trustee Sluice, second by Trustee Moretta. Roll call vote. Sluice? Yes. Moretta? Yes. Jump. Oh, Jones. No. Pam? Yes. Bowden? Yes. Sturba? Yes. And then Jones. Just abstain. Abstain. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, ordinance 2, which will be 2111, uh, is an ordinance authorizing the execution of a First Amendment to the property lease agreement with the Illinois Central Railroad Company. Property located adjacent to the Illinois Central Railroad right of way, if in Illinois, improving the expenditures of, again, we're changing that to business development district funds for the lease payment. So, um, in your packet, there was the uh, modified amendment that is extending our lease for 10 years from this point and uh, it was for a price of $1,200 a year payable up front so be a payment of $12,000 and so this would cover uh, the additional part of that parking area that we want to develop 
a motion there? Second. What, is that motion with the uh, changing to the business development district? Yes. And, right. um, okay, it's, it's clear enough. I think there's one day error there. It's, it's clear enough that it's a 10 year extension. Yes. Motion to second. Yep. Okay. So moved by Trustee Bowden, and second by Trustee Kim. How about Sluice? Bowden first. Bowden oh, first. sorry. I, I, Bowden? Yes. Cam? Yes. Sluice? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Jones? Sturba? Yes. Okay. Oh, is that everybody? Okay. Uh, next on the agenda, item, uh, on the agenda is uh, I want to talk about and get approval from the board for using a consent agenda. Uh, consent agenda is just a, a little time-saving tool that we can use uh, to approve uh, things with just one motion. So, for instance, uh, we can approve the minutes, we can approve the payroll, um, we could approve um, you know, items like uh, you know, the, a group wants to sell tickets, you know, the Boy Scouts want to sell tickets or you know, something that nobody's going to really argue about. You can ask questions, so I mean, that doesn't mean you can't ask a question about an item, it just means that we can just kind of lump those all together and just have one roll call vote. So, is that about? Yes, that, that, the, the consent agenda item would just be on the, on the agenda, it would say consent agenda. And then all of the items that are going to be placed on the consent agenda are listed, let's say one through four or, or five. And uh, the, uh, the first question is the, the consent agenda and the mayor or clerk would ask if any member of the board wishes to remove anything from the consent agenda. If there is a yes, then that gets removed from the consent agenda. If there's a no, it stays on the, it stays on the consent agenda. But the pr proper procedure is always to read every item on the consent agenda and ask the board if there is any board member that wishes to remove that item from the consent agenda. Assuming there's none, can you say none? If there is one, it gets moved down, down below. That's basically the procedure. And other than that, the mayor is correct. It's one vote. It's always, of course, a roll call vote. The other just comment in general is you don't put on the consent agenda anything that uh, spends uh, money of the village or theoretically creates a liability, but it's a little more complicated issue, but, but spending the money uh, or approving a contract that spends money cannot go on the consent agenda. Uh, almost anything else, I mean, you can even put the, uh, you know, permit for a block party or something. You, you can put those on the consent agenda also. So you, can you put payroll and yes. you, oh, you yeah. can do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You need to say payroll, and you should say, you know, payroll or bill, bills and payroll and the total right. amount of. And that can be on the consent. Yes, it can okay. be. Okay. Okay. All right. Any comments on that at all? I think it's a good idea. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve the use of consent agenda and move forward. Second. Moved by Trustee Moravka. Second by Trustee Sluice. Roll call vote. Moravka. Yes. Sluice. Yes. Jones? Yes. Yes. Ham? Yes. Bowden? Yes. Sturba? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, this is just a discussion item, not an action item. Uh, changing the age a person can serve alcohol in the Piatone Liquor Code from 21 years old to 18 years old. Um, this was brought by one of the tavern owners to our uh, attention um, they would like to have the ability for uh, somebody 18 19 or 20 to be able to uh, uh, serve liquor so bring liquor from 
the bar to a table, um, not as a bartender, so not somebody's actually mixing drinks or giving out drinks. Um, the Illinois Liquor Code allows this. Uh, we're a little more restrictive. We don't allow it until they're 21. Uh, there are some, there are many communities that do allow it. So, uh, I, I, again, I said I'd bring it before the board. Uh, I think, Amy, did you include the, some language in the I said I would, but it doesn't look like I did. did get in there. <laughs> so there's some pretty simple language that um, yes. the chief found from some neighboring communities that uh, identify, you know, what a server is and, you know, the specifically, you know, they're not going to be bartending or not going to be there by themselves, um, you know, that type of thing. So I, I think, would, you know, especially for restaurants, um, you know, this might be a good thing, you know, because then you can have a, a server bringing a beer to a table. Um, so right. with the labor shortage the way it is, I don't know. Bad idea, so. I think it's just good to sync up with the state and have the same regulations mm -hmm. as the state. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For no other reason. <laughs> Only one, one thing to think about, and we would just have to write this in or let me know how you feel about it. This was brought up um, by council that um, if you have an 18 year old server, are they checking IDs at the table for, for people who are purchasing? versus the bartender who should be 21 or over. So we just kind of maybe have to smooth that out unless you feel like an 18-year-old server can check the IDs um, I think they can and then the take IDs. the order. Yeah. And then. What's the state require? They allow the server? They allow you to determine it. Okay. Essentially, they allow the local okay. entity to, okay. to, to okay. do that, make that determination. Seems like an unnecessary complication to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so it sounds like there's a consensus to okay. move forward with that. I mean, we've got a lot of other things going on in the mm -hmm. liquor code that we want to change. Mm -hmm. um, so this will just be one more thing we throw in there. So. Okay. okay. Um, item G, Hometown Heroes Program. Uh, in your packet, uh, there was some uh, information uh, that um, we've put together. Uh, this is a blatant, uh, we're stealing this from Mantino. Uh, they you know, got some nice banners up there. Everybody loves them. Um, this is kind of a no-brainer program. Um, it's going to be pretty revenue neutral. Uh, the banners are going to cost us about $45. The brackets for the polls are going to be about $85. So we're asking for a donation of $150 to do this. That'll cover a little bit of the Public Works guy's time to put these up. Uh, what I'd like to propose this first year, normally they put them up from you know Memorial Day through uh, Labor Day. Um, obviously we're you know behind the curve on that already. Um, I'd like to kind of do a pilot program this year and maybe get the ones like the first 20 people. We're gonna we'll put them up in the downtown area. We've got like 22 poles downtown. Um, and maybe that'll generate some interest and then moving forward we can move out to other areas of the village. I spoke with the owners of Terry's, Drolly's, and Pearl um, and asked them if we could use you know, their pole, their light poles, and they were all 100% in favor of it. Uh, there's been some talk you know, about you know, can we put them on comment poles or not, and so, uh, <laughs> you know, We'll, we'll deal with that when we get, uh, get to it, but um, at least we've got something to start. Like I said, we've got our old poles, and then those poles along the highway, I think it you know, would be a great start to the program. So. I'll take three downtown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we'll we'll get these printed out and published, and I'll get it out on Facebook. And like I said, I, I, don't, I don't think we're going to have a hard time. Um, you know, I think we're going to hit the first 20 pretty soon, and then... Um, I think our problem is going to be finding the poles to put them on rather than uh, you know, get the people to do it. So um, I think it'll be a great program. So, so um, I would like a motion to approve us uh, moving forward uh, with this program. Motion. Second. Move, moved by Trustee Marafka, second by Trustee Jones. Roll call. Yes. Jones? Yep. Uh, 
Pam? Yes. Sluice? Yes. Sturba? Yeah. And Mal? Yes. All right, questions of the press. Uh, correspondence. Um, like Trustee Jones says, uh, it's been kind of dry this spring and early summer, so uh, please water your parkway trees or water all your trees, but especially the parkway trees, the village would really appreciate that. Um, any other comments at all? Just keep picking up your dog food, please. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and uh, yeah, everybody hopefully get out and enjoy community days and garage sales. Be careful driving uh, this weekend. People stop for no reason if they see something they like in a garage sale, so <laughs> just be prepared for that. And, uh, oh, yeah. actually, if I could, yeah. um, the uh, Friends of Music is also taking all uh, donations after those garage sales. Okay. So uh, they'll have a drop off point um, outside the Pietone Veterinary Hospital on Saturday and Sunday. Okay. And all donations uh, go to the Friends of Music, which is the Fine Arts Booster for the entire school district. Perfect. Thank you. Anything else? Not a uh, motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Moved by Trustee Sluice. Second by Trustee Ham. Sluice? Yes. Ham? Yes. Bowden? Yes. Sturba? Yep. Rebka? Yes. And Jones? Yes. Okay. Great. Have a good week. <coughs> Any idea how much those scales cost? No, I can ask them. Yeah, I don't think they're too bad. <laughs> yeah. But I like the truck. They, the truck was like under.